So I'll just talk a little bit about who Lion Guard are then. Lion Guard's a great startup that's been around a handful of years, uh, spun out of some of the execs that uh, worked at ConnectWise and a few of their peers. Uh, they're based out of Houston, Texas. So they're good Southerners, but uh, we find them very friendly to deal with. You'll see today I'm wearing my crazy Australia shirt that's normally reserved for um, Australia Day, but I figured given the purpose of today is to introduce Lion Guard and for us to celebrate that we're adding it to our product set that we can extend to partners, I thought I'd wear the local Australian representation service and billing. So I think the session is being recorded, Scott. So why don't we roll? And anyone who's late, we can refer them back to the recording where you get a high level intro. Perfect. Yeah. So first and foremost, you know, who am I? Um, and, you know, there was a brief introduction, but, you know, overall, I spent over 20 years leading IT infrastructure and cyber, cyber security compliance for organizations of all sizes. I spent six years in the managed services space uh, through there. I think I wore every single hat that you guys probably wear. Um, I did help desk. I was an engineer. I did architect. I did VCIO, director of ops, manager. Uh, I did HR. I was in sales. So as you can see, you know, and I have a bunch of different hats I can throw on for fun, but, you know, I've done all the different hats that you guys have worn and, you know, will wear over time. <coughs> you know, today I have the privilege of assisting MSPs globally. Uh, as the senior sales engineer with Lion Guard. You know, I bring that in-depth knowledge and experience to provide the guidance to MSPs like yourself. I'm an active member on the security and compliance team with Lion Guard, so I am still involved very heavily with the cybersecurity community. Uh, and with that, my experience of industry and government compliance requirements gives me the ability to usually quickly identify and develop technology blueprints to bring organizations to compliance. Uh, in addition to being part of Lion Guard, I do teach cybersecurity as an adjunct professor at Harrisburg University here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, and, then as, and, the, and as well, I'm the president of the Cybersecurity Association of Pennsylvania. So cybersecurity definitely is in my blood and everything that I do. So let's talk about visibility. And if this looks like your desk, you have no visibility. <coughs> So before I get into the overall, what Lion Guard is and what our product is, um, and I'm super pumped to show it to you, but I think it's important to take a step back and understand how you got here and why you're joining in with us here today. I think a good question for MSPs to ask themselves or yourself is, does my data empower me? Are you fighting with your data? Uh, if you're vision of data looks like this picture, then you're fighting with data. You are going to have trouble finding it. If you do find it, God only knows if it's the most recent printout of it or the most recent version of it. So it's that constant infight or that constant battle of, am I looking at the right data? And what leads to that issue is, is when you're constantly questioning the data, then it gets into a point where you you don't you immediately just don't trust the data. So immediately you're going straight to your RMM, you're logging into the environment, and you're going straight to the source to get your information. The amount of time that you're wasting to go through those processes to get that information is the difference of being a proactive MSP and being the reactive MSP. Running an MSP feels like this. Even though your office in real life, I. God, I hope is more organized than this picture. Uh, it may not feel that way when your IT stack is unorganized. <coughs> but even when it's not unorganized, there are days that you're dealing with a fire when it just seems like fire after fire after file just piles up and you know you're sitting there like, oh my God, what do I do next? I've been there, I've seen it. You know, you have tools, you have the information. But without it being organized and easily accessible, it's just stuff sitting out on your desk. So do you have data or do you have stuff? And it, like I said, I've come from the MSP space, so I know where you've been. And getting from stuff everywhere, you know, you're going to feel scattered. You're going to feel messy. You're fighting with data. Uh, you know, how long does it take you to run a report about your entire stack for all of your customers? And can you do it all within one portal, you know, from your workstations, your cloud, your network devices? Uh, can you go back in time to see what has changed for compliance purposes? And 
<laughs> to continue on that kind of mayhem scene, this is your IT landscape today. It's complex. You're probably managing IT with data scattered everywhere, all over the place, just like that desk. Uh, each of the systems you support has its own portal, its own reporting, its own alerting, and you're logging into them individually. You know, if you want to learn more about SonicWall, you're typically going to four or five different SonicWalls and logging into each one of them. It's nearly impossible to keep up with it all. Why would you ever want to keep up with all those things the hard way? For one, you don't want to sacrifice profit. I get it. But you need to be able to rely on accurate data on your customers and the systems you support with data you can trust. There's not enough cycles in the day, even with the best engineers to make it happen. My wife, I, you know, why I left the MSP space is my wife said I had to find a new job or find a new wife because I was doing 80 to 90 hours a week. And it was just trying to stay afloat. And that was just because a lot of it was just that disorganization that, you know, that constantly trying to fight the uphill battle. Um, you must have visibility into all of these systems to manage your day so that you can get ahead of that. And while you continue to grow and scale, that's your team gets overwhelmed. They get stressed. They're going to get burned out. They're going to be that guy sitting there in the middle, pulling his hair out, going through that, you know, process. Now, you don't have to settle for it because with unified visibility, we bring it calm and collective. And every time I slow show this slide, I say the guy in the picture there shouldn't be standing there looking all calm. He needs to be sitting out on the beach with a margarita or just a drink with an umbrella in it because he's calm, he's relaxed. And that's what unified visibility brings you. And it's a game-changing solution that's you know, brings all of your data into one place, inspecting all of the systems you use automatically every day. And that's what LionGuard delivers, the ability for you as the MSP to standardize, secure, and scale with LionGuard automation. So with that one swoop, you can unify all these different systems. There's over 71 inspectors uh, in the platform today. That's systems, that's portals, that's access, that's alerting into one centralized location. LionGuard is that unified visibility that's going to feed the core tools that you're using. So when I look at this unified visibility, it has all these things coming in like that umbrella, going to that person. But what it's doing is it's standardizing all that information. And we're pushing that over into IT glue or Hoodoo for documentation, being able to push that into Lifecycle Insights or Nermata for VCIO type tools, or pushing it over into BrightGage or Power BI for reporting. We have an open API. So if you have some dev team, some dev members on your team, you can actually pull out of our API and make your own portal. And on top of that, we even integrate with the majority of the major PSAs or service desks out there. So bringing that data for alerting into your PSA. So it's the platform that your technicians are working in already. So you don't have to change your internal policies or processes to make LionGuard integrate with your platform. So I want to get into a little bit of endpoints. And endpoints is a timely conversation because we just rolled out our endpoint visibility, our Windows Workstation Inspector. So I do want to spend a little bit of time on here. But again, most of the conversation overall is about LionGuard. And endpoints is just one portion of what LionGuard does. So when I look at endpoints in the post-COVID world, you know, work from anywhere is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. And it's not going anywhere globally. You have that increased threat of just everything. You know, before COVID, we had that walled garden, that infrastructure that, you know, no one, you know, short of who I wanted to come into the door was really accessing my computers. But now with work from anywhere, you have your computers, your HIPAA client information, your uh, data, your P PII, you know, all of this data, credit card numbers, whatever, are now potentially being accessed from people's houses. And you have computers that are going to the homes and are they being shared with their children? Is Sally in accounting's husband using it to play, you know, Minecraft or something in his spare time? You know, how are the workstations that, the, that you're deploying for your end customers being used at home? Because that's a big thing because 
if you know Sally's son gets in to play Minecraft and he finds you know a mod he wants to deploy, he downloads it, and next thing you know, Sally has a virus and everything she's working on is now encrypted. Uh, so making sure we identify those threats, because there are more threats today than ever before. Managing endpoints at scale requires this data. And when you look at the amount of data that you need to really manage the workstations, it's not like you can just go around an office and take a look at systems, you know, as you're going through. Now it's that whole remote management aspect of it. And the tools that you have in place today are only giving you a scratch of the surface of the information. And none of them are giving you the information that allows you to see back, going back 18 months, to see how changes have evolved with the system or when they occurred. So with endpoint visibility, we're giving you insight into that Windows workstation, Windows servers, and Linux servers. It goes beyond inventory management because <laughs> we're, we're more like that MRI machine. You know, when we dig into it, we're pulling data from your speed tests, from latency, your software, your services, logged on application. So we're digging deeper to give you that depth of information that you've come to expect with LionGuard. We're giving you visibility into those Windows 10 and Windows 11 uh, laptops, desktops, and tablets. But the big thing right there, without requiring admin level permissions. And that's absolutely huge. Like when you hear SaaS providers or anyone really creating a tool that's designed for the MSP community or end customers, it's typically they need God level access. You know, I need elevated permissions. I need to do this. I'm a management tool. I'm looking, I'm analyzing, and then, you know, I'm triggering and I'm doing, you know, typically an action. LineGuard is that auditing tool that's running at a local user permission level. We don't need that you know, high level permission, because we're not digging deeper than we need to, to give you that core data set of what's going on. And why you need visibility in endpoints, there's three examples that I love pointing out because it shows the depth of what LineGuard allows you to do. If we go back, uh, I think it was third quarter last year, there was the Razor mouse security vulnerability that if I took a Razor mouse and I plugged it into a system, whatever account I was logged into, it, it would find a way and elevate my permissions to an admin level. Like that's a pretty big security vulnerability. I could see people walking around with Razor mice, you know, just around if it wasn't figured out. Um, so with your current tools, how would you go about identifying who had a Razor mouse? Most tools like your RMM is only going to give you a snippet of, hey, I have this plugged in. It may show USB mouse. It's not getting granular in the drivers or anything else. So now you're looking at software potentially, you know, is the software for Razor installed? Is this, you know, so being able to go through and identify who has it is a time consuming process. And typically at that point, you're going system by system. With LineGuard, we are showing you the driver and the manufacturer of the mice and keyboards installed. So you're able to actually take a look at that and see exactly really quickly every one of your customers who has one of them. Log4j was another humongous one. And when you think about what Log4j did to the IT space is it just opened up such a wide array of so many different things that could be impacted that you really had to go vendor by vendor, talk, you know, have conversations, find their statements, uh, and really identify what tools and what services your customers are using and what the risk is. Again, to do this with most tools, it's a very long time consuming process after the consuming time process of finding out where the vulnerabilities are. But with LionGuard, we were able to go in, create a report that's highlighting everything that we knew at the time, the capability of adding custom applications in through the Windows uh, endpoint visibility and being able to give you a better picture of where your weaknesses are with Log4j. And then Microsoft Defender is the last one that I love mentioning because by default, Microsoft Defender, even with Intune, the, the unified portal, that single portal for Defender is, isn't very strong. So with LionGuard, we do bring all of that information from Windows Defender or Microsoft Defender into that single portal, allowing you to report on it across all of your customers, take a look at all of the settings and see all of the alerts all at once. So 
you can't protect what you can't see. And, you know, if I was to say somewhere in this pile, you know, there is data that you need to identify where the vulnerability is with your firewalls. You know, you have that paper somewhere on this desk, but you don't know where it is. You know, but let's get to this because everything you need is in sight. It's the tool that keeps you organized, keeps you efficient. There's no more searching for data, no more going in blind without a map. It's that final puzzle piece that consolidates all of the customer data that you need in a single view into that single unified platform. Now, endpoint visibility and unified visibility isn't a one-time cleaning service for your MSP. It's that file cabinet that, if you will, that gets to the root case of the mess and keeps you organized so that you can keep your promises that you've made as an MSP. And the best thing with the file cabinet is it's updated automatically for you once you have it set up. <coughs> Patch management, licensing information, work from anywhere, security, no matter what your concerns are, endpoint visibility or unified visibility is going to make it easy to track, monitor, and report on those important things. So now I just went through a, you know, a, a nice little demo there, trying to hit some endpoint, trying to hit some unified visibility. But I think the bread and butter that you're here to see is the demo or the product itself. So let me switch over to the screen here. Let me turn on my fancy green mouse so now you guys can see my icon. Uh, but when I look at LionGuard, and by all means, if you have questions, please keep them going in the chat, keep them going in the Q&A. We have a lot of people on the call, and it looks like a lot of the questions are getting answered as we go. But this is the LionGuard dashboard. So here you can see we have 89 environments. So what we consider an environment is one of your customers. And it doesn't matter how many locations they have or how large or how small they are, it's one customer is one environment. Um, we look at systems. That's how many different systems you're inspecting. It could be your endpoint, it could be a server, it could be a sonic a firewall, switches, cloud services, antivirus, um, internet domains, we have a ton of, you know, like I said, there were 71 in production inspectors and there's more in our beta area. Um, systems will self-discover other systems. And at the end of the day, you know, we have that smart actionable learning. But what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of our systems. So what I want to do is I want to go to Microsoft's favorite fake company here, Contoso Nation. I love saying it's Microsoft's favorite fake company because I just, I really enjoy it as everyone knows Contoso Nation. So when I look here at the single customer dashboard, I can see there's 82 systems. We've had 55 changes over the last 90 days and even how many alerts. You have the capability of pinning some notes if you want some common passwords and things. You don't post the password directly here, but here you can see my password management login. So it's a link to it. So let me scroll down. And the first one I will wanna find is internet domain. So I'm gonna go here into contoso.com and it probably looks pretty self-explanatory to you. It's going to capture some of your root data, you know, what the overview looks like, the DNS, you know, website, email information down here, like what the DMARC, SPF records are. But the bread and butter of all of this is this timeline up top. And we can see the timeline is actually scrolling. It looks like the page is just kind of catch up. But I want to go back in time. Uh, we probably need to clear some of the data for it so I don't have to go back too far. But I think back in March, I had some changes. And as I go back in time, anytime that a change occurred, we'll see a little yellow triangle up here. Yeah, so here I can show you that change detection. So here you can see, you know, licenses consumed that Windows 10. And if it's something that's removed, we cross it out. And if it's something that's added, you can see it's in green here. So you can see enter, um, enterprise mobility licensing, you know, eight out of 10, nine out of 10. Uh, so I can really see some data, like I'm adding some licenses around here. And I can even see licensed users as well, where it's showing me what users were added. So I can see Bart Simpson, Bruce Wayne, Clark Kent. So I can see a number of users were recently added in here. Uh, and I think we, was, we removed them and then re-added them, which is why a lot of them are showing in red and then in green. But if I go back over to system details, as I want to show you guys some of the data that we're collecting here for 365, because I do believe it is an important inspector uh, because 365 is so difficult to manage for all of your customers in a single portal. So when I look at 365, I can see my tenant security score versus the maximum available, my total active users, licensing, 
if I'm doing any syncing with Azure Active Directory, but I can dig deeper into that licensing. So here I can see how many licenses I have active and how many assigned. You know, right now I'm using nine licenses of E5, but I have 10 that are active. You know, how many times have you gone a couple months with a customer that there were licenses that were supposed to be decommissioned that you didn't decom? You know, the customer is gonna ask you for a refund. There is no mechanism for you to go to Microsoft and say, hey, I'd like to get some money back. <coughs> we also show you the licenses by user. And I've had the same thing happen here where I had a L1 or a lower level technician go in and upgrade someone from like an E3 to an E5 license, but not remove the E3. So I maybe have a user that being billed for two different licenses when there's an overlap in both of those. Microsoft doesn't say you can only select one of them. They'll happily take your money for both. And again, the same situation. That customer is going to look for you to refund that money, and you're going to have to eat that cost from Microsoft. Looking at the user section, we can dig in and see exactly who the users are and even seeing privileged users. So if I just wanted to know real quick who my privileged users were, I can come in, see all of my privileged users. And being able to filter and sort all of these columns, that makes it huge. Who has MFA enabled? Uh, if I clear out the privileged filter, hit this button again, I'll change the sort the other way. And, you know, does anyone have MFA enabled? I think everyone in this account is disabled. So that's a no yeah. no because we want to make sure that's getting enabled. But we're bringing this. That's because they're all superheroes, mate. They don't need oh, protection, oh, right? I'm looking, you've got all the cool guys, Tony Stark, you know, they don't, they don't need MFA. That's right. John Wayne's oh, in here, <laughs> Frank Castle. Yeah. Uh, you know, our, our dev team has some fun sometimes. <laughs> Another great feature while you're in there that I've seen before is the brute force count and stuff as well. I mean, and the thing here is we're providing a general overview uh, to Lion Guard, and we're looking at a particular inspector. Uh, but yeah, I, I've definitely seen in auditing and things in the past, identifying accounts that have privilege access that are being brute forced that just don't even need to be there. So yeah. it, it can be used both operationally and uh, analytically. Um, yeah. And having this unified visibility of secure scores, the last one that I want to show you inside of 365, but things like MFA. You know, quickly identifying what my threat score is. Okay, I can see 12 items evaluated, 12 items in breach. If I wanted to look at the TLS depreciation, am I still using old versions of TLS? Or am I still using SMTP, IMAP, or POP3 with my devices? You know, this is really any more, this needs to be disabled. Um, they're on by default. And unless you're doing scan to email, there's no reason for them to be on because uh, it just opens up a legacy methodology for someone to breach an email account. So getting those turned off and having it discovered in here allows us to create that metric, create that alert and notifying you if those are open, if you want to make sure that stuff gets closed. Um, but I do want to hit a couple other of the inspectors as just part of my quick demo. Um, I'm going to use the sonic wall firewall here. So if I go sonic wall. So think about your firmware, you know, those, those hardware pieces, the switches, the access points, the firewalls that you're managing today, you know, getting information like the serial number or the firmware version, you know, getting a CVE that comes out and says all sonic walls running 6.501 and older must be updated because of a critical, you know, 9.5 security vulnerability came out. You know, being able to quickly come into LionGuard, take a look at all of your customers. So if I come back here and I go into systems and I go to Sonic Wall, I can see I have two customers that have Sonic Walls. I can do metrics. And real quick from here, I can see all of my customers. I can see all the models. I can see all the software versions. So say I only wanted to see the one that's 6.2 and say, okay, this one here, I can export this list in a, CV, a CSV, print it out, drop it on my engineer's desk and say, these devices need to be updated. There's a security vulnerability out of it. This is the type of visibility that you can gain only with LionGuard. And like I said, we have 71 different inspectors that are in production, everything from 3CX in your phone and voice over IP, 
uh, your local network with Active Directory or Azure Active Directory. You have your firewalls, your switches, your access points. Then you get into your cloud applications like Cisco Umbrella, Cloudflare, your backup solutions like Datto, um, BCDR. Uh, we have RMM tools, uh, Duo. You know, the list goes on and on when we look through overall what LionGuard is able to bring unified visibility into. Um, so the last thing that I want to show you is reports. And I think reports is important because it allows you to take groups of metrics and bring that data into a single report and have it either scheduled to send you either customer by customer, or maybe it's a compliance. So here's like a combined CIS report. Uh, so if I open this one up, I can see, you know, combining, you know, all of the different clients that I have, privileged user, system info, a computer list, active user list, stale user list, you know, just taking a look at seeing what's all here, taking a look at Windows servers, the software list, failed patches, Windows workstations. And, you know, this is just looking at what these controls are covering for CIS controls and giving me that information real quick and easy. But I want to come down and I don't want a CIS control. Let me created by Scott. And as you see, I create a lot of them, but I'm going to pull the quarterly checklist one up. So before joining LionGuard, like I said, I was at a MSP. And one of the things that I did as a VCIO was these quarterly checklists or your QBRs. And these are things that I checked in a QBR. It was, you know, how many workstations, how many servers, is 80 recycle been enabled, domain mode, forest mode, taking a look at the firewalls, to, you know, what the serial number is, is it licensed currently, uh, ubiquity storage crowd, you know, the inspectors that matter to you, breaking out those out. And I have now all of my customers in one screen. So imagine this for your billing person being able to quickly identify license counts across all of your customers. And the time that it's not only gonna save your billing person, but now the time it's going to save potentially you from them calling you to say, can you dig deeper into this and give me information? Or, you know, looking at firmware versions or when a CVE comes up, like that's the power of what LionGuard and unif Unified Visibility gives you. Uh, and like we said, this is just scratching the surface. If you want, ask questions or something you want to see, and I'm more than happy to show it to you. Uh, but with that, you know, Guy, I want to open it up to, I guess, questions, unless there's something else you want me to dig in. You're muted. Brian, I'm muted first. Uh, I was typing away and putting a couple of comments in there. So by all means, everyone, please feel free to throw in a question in the Q&A. I know Roberto and uh, Marvin were there attending to any queries privately, but if you throw them in there, we can discuss them. Happy to see any comments in the chat as well if you don't have a specific question, but you know, would like to just steer our conversation in a direction. In your demo set, Scott, I don't know what you've got, but for example, there's things like Cisco routers and HP switches, and um, you, know, you can actually see the running configs for these things, guys, roll back and look at differences. And that absolutely allows you to start looking at behavioural change. You're trying to analyse what has changed here, what's going on. The timeline when it's not doing that quirky thing, um, you know, obviously that's admitted because it's a de demo. But if you've got your uh, Cisco IOS devices, your HP devices, I think there was Fortinet in there. There's You showed Sophos as an example. Uh, Miraki, there's a whole lot of stuff there where you can see changes in the configuration. Now that's great from an accountability perspective. Uh, yes, we keep track of changes we make. It's great from uh, the ability to go back and just someone says, I'm having trouble accessing something. I'm, you know, something won't connect. What might have changed? You can drill at the high level, you'll see changes last 90 days. That's across the whole environment. Mm -hmm. And you can drill into that and start saying which of those inspectors have got changes. So, uh, I'm just wondering what else is in that list of uh, common products. Uh, spot that MSPs might be interested in the inspectors just at a glance. Um, you've got that in the list there by the looks of it. So they're ones you've got deployed in the environment, right? Versus all the ones that are available that we're looking at there. Yeah, this is this is a list of all, we have 76 active systems yeah. here. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, we have your backups, like here's a storage craft backup. Yeah. Uh, you know, being able to see what your backup jobs are, what the backups yeah. themselves are, disk usage, yeah. hours until next backup, your image base, yeah. destinations they're going to. Um, yeah. So, and that's a great example of, again, someone has to check if it makes your backups are still working. And you can look at that per customer. You can look at that across all the customers, right? Um, duos, pro curves. I mean, I'm looking at that list. There's so many things. I saw Ubiquity, and I know a number of our partners and things use things like Ubiquity because yeah, there's a lot of pressure in the smaller end of the MSP market to deliver, you know, low cost. Uh, I even know at least one of the people in there is a big Synology fan, you know. Mm -hmm. Synology and QNAP over time have had issues where firmwares, like everyone, firmwares need to be updated and they're not necessarily in a central management console. So this is driving a whole lot of information together. You, you might, I know there was an extreme picture at the start for Scott with a, a messy office and a, <laughs> I've never quite been that bad and I, I, I'm a shocker when it comes to paper, but there are disparate systems. None of them give you full visibility. And the aim of this is to give you a holistic perspective. So hopefully you're seeing that. There are a couple of uh, questions rolling through and, and I think we can uh, answer them live if you want to, Scott. So uh, I'll just, if Roberto can drive the clicking of the buttons in Zoom, the passwords for logins, does, does this get entered into Lioncard or d d does it get it from IT Glue or whatever? So uh, that's from Nat over in Perth. I put that, Nat, thanks for that question. Um, the, the reality is there's, with the agents, there's an inspector. Can you just show them the, the setting up of the creds, Scott? So you end up with a token. For the I, I think I can answer it pretty easy. So any credential or API key that you place inside of LionGuard, uh, we're not bringing it over from any other systems. We're not a password manager. Once you type it in, we don't even give you visibility to see that password again. It is, you know, encrypted with a separate key within the platform. Lion Guard can't decrypt it. You can't decrypt it. The only thing that has the right to decrypt it is when the inspector runs. It, you know, it decrypts it, it runs it, and then it locks it back up in that little little lock hole that it's in, the safe. Uh, so we take security extremely seriously, um, and you know that's you know just one of the way. When I look at, you know, just overall encryption, your, your tenant level is encrypted. Each one of your customers is encrypted with a separate key and every password that you enter is another key on top of it. So yeah. we do do multi-layer approach to that encryption. So it's not just one big open encryption area. Um, so, Scott, <laughs> in mind, we flew straight into because endpoint visibility is a new feature and you've been delivering a lot of webinars. Can you just drive back into the agent versus inspector thing and just explain that architecture very quickly? Because uh, I don't, I don't, maybe I missed it because I've seen too many webinars. So whilst Scott's bringing that up, there's this concept of tokens for environments and that gets associated with one or more environments, that's up to you, but each of them has their secure key. Maybe you just talk through that process of how that works, Scott. Yeah, so when you go to deploy an agent, <coughs> You're going to come in here, download your agent, Windows or Linux. But what you'll need is you'll need to go into account settings and create one of those access tokens. So it's going to have a public access key as well as a private access key. The private access key, again, you're, you're going to lose visibility into it once you leave the screen. But that's pretty much your username and password that LionGuard identifies as your API. And that's what allows the different systems to connect back in. So now if I go back over to agents, you're going to see I have a number of systems that are showing in here. A lot of them, because this is a demo environment, are showing red. Uh, but like here, the SRD Win 10, that's one of the workstations that I have uh, in my lab. Uh, or here, this desktop 1Q, that's my uh, Dell Latitude laptop that my uh, kids use when they're home from school. So, you know, I can click on that and I can see what active inspectors are tied to it. And this is bringing in, you know, that Windows workstation. And I didn't really get into the Windows workstation one yet. Uh, so it's a perfect time to really show you that data that it brings in. Um, so I can see that overview, the operating system, the model, the domain, domain role. I can see what type of hardware is being generated. Down below, I can see, like I mentioned, the keyboards and the mice, seeing the manufacturer, the description of it even getting into the USB devices, you know, tracking those USBs to make sure employees aren't 
uh, constantly plugging in a three terabyte drive and they're using it as their home storage unit. Uh, seeing software, you know, being able to identify what the software is. And this is great for troubleshooting with that timeline functionality. You know, I get that customer that always called in. It's like my computer worked fine yesterday and today it's not working anymore. Well, why is it not working right now? What is your process in identifying? Why isn't it working? You're probably logging into the system, taking the computer away from that user. And God forbid if it's Sally in accounting and it's payroll day, because she's going to let you hear that she doesn't want you on her machine, but trying to then find out what has changed. You're going in and looking here, you're looking there. You know, next thing you know, you've taken an hour out of Sally's time. Mm -hmm. With LionGuard, you know, super simple, right from the timeline, I can say, oh, it was working fine on 11.4. Well, let's take a look at your changes. Oh, you lost an e-drive. Oh, and I see Google Chrome was updated. Maybe that's what caused the issue, or maybe it was a Java plugin. You know, being able to quickly identify that type of stuff is what really separates LionGuard from everyone else. We have your hardware, your software, your updates, network diagnostics, and even that security tab where I was talking to you about all the Windows Defender stats that we bring in including your preferences, your threats, firewall status, getting the whole way down to those local users. So while, while you're on that, uh, in the endpoint, I know a lot of our partners have got uh, RMM tools, but, you know, the Connect Visors, the Casayas, you know, Enable, whatever. And this doesn't really replace that. This is just, again, collating all of this information across all these different systems at your fingertips as a starting point to know where you're going. It's not to say you won't jump over to your RMM and start drilling in and analyzing further. Um, mm -hmm. This is again, great for real time. What am I looking at here? And let me find the source of the problem or post case analytics. Is there changes that I should be co concerned about going and looking at status of backups, going and looking for changes on systems as part of your, your monthly health checks or your periodic reviews for the customers. Can I just say also, this is a fantastic uh, tool set for going in and auditing or assessing what it's going to cost to service your customer. Because they say, oh, yeah, simple, just got, oh, yeah, just two servers and that's it. And we, I, know, I know that we did an audit. And the CEO said, two servers. We went in, there's two racks full of stuff. There's a cluster of VMware servers. There's 20 virtual servers. There's 2003 servers, 2008 server. And I'm just going, my gosh, the CEO has no idea what the complexity is here. This tool is all fantastic for bringing it together at the start. Again. You might have IT Glue, it'll do some things, you know, or IT Portal, whatever these other tools you have. And, and, I, and I've spent time around those. This is giving you a salient view of everything. So this probably feeds, got into a question, which is not a thing for you to answer. And that was, how's it priced? I don't know whether in the demos you talk about broadly about the structure for pricing, but um, let me start that question. So Pat, thanks for your question there. Broadly speaking, uh, as a partner, you mm -hmm. license a minimum number of environments, so that might be 15 customers, and you've got two types of inspectors, cloud-based inspectors that are basically usable for free, and there's two levels. There's a core license and an essentials license, mm -hmm. and then there's advanced inspectors, which is basically your Windows and your Linux agents where there's account cost. Um, without going into detail, and there, and there is a, a special offer that'll go out to anyone that's come to this webinar to sign on board in Australian dollars, uh, instead of US if you're already a customer or ignore the US dollars altogether. We're talking like, a, you know, a, a buck, an inspector for the advanced ones. We're talking, um, honestly, chump change across the environment uh, per environment. So if it's 15 environments. So Scott, do you want to comment on that? Or Roberto, I know you're sitting there. Do you want to pipe in and talk about uh, the pricing model at all? Uh, I, think, uh, I think you covered it pretty well. You know, with it being a broad conversation, I really don't want to get into it because pricing really depends on how many customers you're looking to bring into LionGuard, how many of those fully managed customers, and, and the pricing is specific for that. Um, so if you go, in fact, I'll just show you, if you go to LionGuard.com slash pricing, mm -hmm. you're going to see that we have our core licensing product, um, and it's really, it's the core and then there's essentials is, is really your main licensing. And then we have additional endpoint licenses that you can add on top. So yeah. with the core licensing, for example, if I do learn more, it's going to break down some of those tiers. And we have some promotionals 
promotions that are going on right now. So definitely reach out to Guy for those promotion rates. Uh, but you can see the more environments, the more customers that you're bringing in, that cost of ownership drops dramatically per mm. month. Um, and when you're over 100, it even drops even more. What's great mm. is for each one of these environments that you bring in, we're giving you five endpoint licenses or five endpoint inspectors that you can use in a pool. So if you bring 100 in, you're getting 100 times five. You're getting 500 endpoints out of the box mm. that you can start to use for your servers and your workstations. And it's when you say, okay, well, that's giving me 500, but I really have 1500, you know, then, then we're looking at, you know, some additional pricing conversations. Yeah. But I think- Can I just comment on that too? Certain devices like switches, the Sophos, et cetera, are, are, are using a basic license of an account to that. The endpoints of the things like servers or SQL server where we're really drilling into a deep uh, analysis and a deep tool set there. So ha happy to have that conversation, explain that, but hopefully that gives a high level idea of what's there. Um, there's an interesting question here, and it's, I guess, a broad um, strategic question rather than a specific product one. A lot of people are concerned about supply chain compromise. Do you have any comments from LionGuard's perspective and the approach there? Uh, yeah, I mean, security is top notch. Um, our product team is very aware of the risks with supply chain attack. Um, you know, Log4j, what happened with some of the other vendors in the industry over the last 12 to 18 months. Um, you know, we've seen supply chain, hack, or supply chain hacks wreak havoc. Um, and it is very much a concern. We do an awful lot of code signing. We do an awful lot of verification, uh, quality control. And, you know, we do take your security completely, you know, in you know, at, at, you know, what it, for what it's worth. Um, mm -hmm. If you are going through that process and you want to do a security audit for us, um, you know, all I would need is as a prospect uh, for you to sign an NDA. Uh, we are SOC 2 type 2 compliant. So, you know, I can send you our SOC 2 type 2 report. Uh, we also have a security overview white paper that I can send you that really outlines the different things that we do for security and protecting you. Some of the things I mentioned here, um, but we do take security very seriously. My background being in cybersecurity and being on the cyber, uh, the security and compliance team. Um, you know, when I brought LineGuard in, I did a vendor assessment for them. Honestly, when I do consulting with MSPs, I tell them, you know, one of my first questions, are, are you doing vendor assessments? And if they say no, I say one of the first things you have to do is start doing vendor assessment. Because if you don't know where your data is being stored, uh, how it's being secured, then you're really just waiting for that attack to happen somewhere that you don't know it. Yeah, great. And I, I appreciate that background. And hopefully that goes further than the answer they might have expected there. So mm -hmm. one, one last question I'd like to throw on the table is uh, there was a query around uh, alerting and the options to interface with RMM and stuff. Can we have a quick look at how this ties in with how you know, our partners might be doing ticketing and ticketing and, and job management. Yeah, so inside our integrations, we have PSA integrations with Autotask, ConnectWise, Kaseya, ServiceNow, and Synchro. We also give you the capability of pushing tickets via email or into Microsoft Teams. So what I'm going to do is if I go into our actionable alerts, um, and once it loads, we have a couple of things in here. So first and foremost, you have your rules. So all of your rules, that's pretty much taking a metric of information and setting thresholds to it. So if I look at, say, internet domain expiration, you know, one that everybody deals with one way or another, uh, internet domain expiration. I can see at 30 days, I'm generating a medium priority ticket, 15 days, high priority, five days critical. That looks pretty self-explanatory here. But if I go in and I edit this or I'm going to clone this, I'm going to show you that there's actually a lot more you can do to help reduce the noise and speed up your ticket resolution. So first, you can see the system. So I can come in here and, you know, choose LionGuard.com. Days until expiration, it's going to give you the value of what it's at and then if it would be triggered. So say, for example, I wanted to add a metric on domain registrar. Uh, operator does not contain GoDaddy. And the reason I'd add GoDaddy in here is because GoDaddy waits until day zero to renew a domain. 
So here I can say for this critical priority ticket, if all of these metrics aren't met, then I don't want a ticket. So here you can see this one here is a yes. So that's not going to trigger this alert. Then you can see your high, your medium priority. The other thing that I love pointing out is this here is being able to customize what is in that ticket body, what is in that email, putting in a URL to your SOP, adding steps one, two, one, two, three, four, you know, going through the process. So now when your L1 gets that call, or that triage tech gets it, they know the information they need to look at, they know the steps that you want them to go through, or they know the link of what they have to do to get it. So once you have your rules created and you know they're pretty much that best practice analyzer for you, then we go over into templates and that's where you start assigning them to how it's going to react. Is it going to go into LionGuard and ConnectWise? Is it going to go over into Teams? Is it going to go to an email address? Uh, you know, yeah. being able to identify what that is and then also choose which environments you want it to go into. So being able to say for this customer that's co-managed, I want them to get an email of all the alerts that we generate so that they have record of it. But for this co-managed customer, they are relying on us to really handle that. Uh, so being able to you know, differentiate your customers, differentiate your alerts and break it down into what matters and where it's delivered is absolutely huge. And it's unique in the industry on what you can do with alerting and since you can alert on any metric, we now can become that unified alerting method, uh, metric or method for all of your integrations, for all of your tools. Great, uh, I think that's great. And I saw you talk about GoDaddy. We've all got our pet uh, domain registrar we hate. And you know, over here, crazy domains is not very popular, for example, but I love the way you can tune that. So you could do, show me all of them that aren't this because you do use GoDaddy or you do use TPP. And that means you brought on a customer and you haven't changed over the management. I've seen that happen in the past. Oh, hang on a second, it's time for renewal, it's too late. You have to renew back with the old provider because we're within the window for renewal. So there's all sorts of ways you can use this. And I also like, Scott, what you showed about the steps because mm -hmm. our partners have got, you know, everything from service now to mm -hmm. connect wise to Autotask or Dano, you know, as it's now rolled up, I think. But there's others that have things like repair shop or our other more simplistic tools and they don't have that template ability so i like the way you can put in those actions or standard operating procedures that's fantastic that you've got the ability to simply do that because some of those platforms it's not simple no, so absolutely. that's great well look we're, we're all time poor and i know this was scheduled for an hour unless there's any other burning questions i'm happy to give everyone their time back including our peers over there in uh, the US who uh, some of are facing snowstorms and blizzards, weird weather we've been having. But as I was saying at the start, we're really pleased to be adding LineGuard to the vendors that we've partnered with. Uh, Roberto's on the screen, Marvin was there, maybe he had to run off for the storm. They're the two guys that uh, work with us. Uh, they, they cover the patch of you know ANZ and the greater APAC. Hello, Roberto. And um, we're, look, we've got Hassan working here on our team to field general inquiries. For those of you who know me personally that are on the call, I'm always happy and open to talk about, you know, our shared understanding of what you do. And we're growing our team here so that you can come to us with questions around these technologies. And by all means, please, if you're interested, reach out. Uh, let's have a chat about whether you're interested in a further demo one-on-one. -on -one. You want to talk about pricing, how it would look for you. And as I said, uh, we'll send out a circular with an offer that Lion Guard's kindly made for an intro deal, uh, which is a discount on the uh, standard pricing for anyone who signs up as a result of attending this webinar. So, uh, hey, Roberto, you made it out of the snowstorm. Uh, you got everyone safely home. Uh, all right, thanks, Scott. Thank you, Roberto, Marvin. Uh, thanks, Sarah, who I know somewhere in the background there for bringing that together and the rest of the team at Lion Guard. Enjoy the rest of your day and reach out if you've got any questions. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.